Hi everyone, welcome to Online Study Buddy. So today, we're gonna learn about sets and set notations, and also you will learn about classifying numbers based on the real number system. So let's start. First, we will define what a set is. A set is a collection of things or elements. So in this example, natin, we can see three different sets named set A, set B, and set C. The elements of set A are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, while the elements of set B is 2, 4, and 6. The elements naman ng set C is 1 and 5. So I call the contents of a set as elements. Elements are defined as part of a set. So ang symbol na ginagamit to denote elements is this symbol. So, para siyang inverted na 3, or le the letter E. So, maroon din tayong symbol na ginagamit for those that are not part of a set or not an element. So, ito naman yung uh, symbol na ginagamit dito is E na mayroong slash. So, dito sa example natin, let us first, uh, let's identify kung yung mga given values are part of the set or not. So, ang 3, as we can see, is part is an element of set A, therefore we will use this symbol. Next, ang 6 is not an element of set A, so we will use this symbol. So next, let's define the cardinality of a set. So the cardinality is number of elements in a specified set. So as you can see here, yung symbol na ginagamit is uh, the long vertical lines uh, beside the name of the set. So, let us identify the cardinality of the three sample sets that we have. So, the cardinality of set A is 5. So, we will just literally count the number of elements inside set A. Next, what is the cardinality of set B? So, 1, 2, 3. So, 3 ang cardinality ng set B. Next, set C. Ang cardinality naman ng set C is 2. Okay, so, dali lang, diba? Next is a union. So, a union of two sets is defined as a set that contains the elements of set X or set B. So, ang kailangan nang gawin dito is to list down all of the elements that are present in uh, the set specified. So, First, let's answer A union B. So, ang laman ng sets A and B are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, yung B union C is 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. So, we just have to write all of the elements that were contained in the specified set. Yung symbol nga pala na ginagamit to denote the union is this letter U. Okay. Next, ang intersection. So, yung intersection naman, it is defined as a set that contains the elements that can be found in both set X and set Y, for example. So, yung symbol naman na ginagamit dito is yung inverted U. So, let's identify the intersection. Of set A and set B. So A intersection B is a set that contains 2 and 4. Kasi yun lang yung common elements nila. Next naman, set B intersection with set C. So as we can see, wala silang common elements. So ang answer dito is a null set or an empty set. So when we have an empty set, it is just represented with two curly brackets na walang laman sa loob. So next, let us define subsets. So a subset is uh, defined as where set X has some or all of the elements of set Y. So the symbol na ginagamit dito is this symbol. Yung underline na to, it, um, para siyang equal sign kasi some or all of the elements. So parang sinasabi natin na set X can be equal to set Y. So, for proper subset naman, it, ang definition niya is where set X has some of the elements of set Y. So, some lang, not all. So, ang symbol naman na ginagamit dito is this, yung subset na walang underline. 
lastly, we have a symbol also for not a subset. So it is where set X is not a subset of set Y. So yung symbol naman na ginagamit dito is yung proper subset na may slash. So for our example, let us identify if the following sets are a subset, a proper subset, or not a subset of the given set A. So the first set natin is the set that contains the elements 2 and 5. So is it a subset, a proper subset, or not a subset of A? 2 and 5 are elements of A. So this is a subset. But since this set is not equal to A, it is also a proper subset. So proper subset yung lalagay natin dito. Next, we have a set that contains 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So this is a subset of set A. Kasi equal sila ang dalawa. Lastly, we have a set that contains 1 and 8. So as we, as we know, as we can see, the element 1 is inside set A, but then the element 8 is not inside set A. Therefore, the set that contains 1 and 8 is not a subset of set A. Okay, so let's proceed. For universal sets naman, a universal set is defined as the set of all possible values. So for the previous items, we have been using these three particular sets, yung set A, set B, and set C. We can say that um, these three sets is part of a universal set of counting numbers from 1 to 100. So parang ganun lang siya. Parang siya yung largest group of the sets that we specified. So the symbol used for the universal set is a capital U na italicized. So I hope you don't confuse this with the symbol used for the union. So always remember that when we are referring to universal set, ito yung itsura ng symbol niya. So we introduced the universal set because our next um, item is the complement of a set. So the complement of a set is defined as elements that are not in set X but are found in the universal set. So yung symbol na ginagamit dito is a tiny letter C that's sa upper right no name ng set. So for our examples, let's identify the complements of set A and set B. So let us identify the complements of set A. So the elements of set A are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So yung complements are those that are not in set A but are in the universal set. So the complement of set A is equal to a set that contains 6, 7, 8, until 100. Next, the complement of set B is a set that contains 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, until 100. So, yeah. Identify nyo lang kung ano yung mga wala dun sa set na yun but can be found in the universal set. Next, sets in general can be written in two types of notations. First is the roster notation and next is the set builder notation. So yung roster notation is yung nakita nating notation dun sa mga previous sets na ginagamit natin. So, here, we just list down all of the elements that are inside the set. Yung set builder notation naman, it's a notation where we describe a set. So, dun sa previous example natin, our universal set contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 100. So, yung set builder notation nito, um, sinusulat siya as a set where all x such that x is a counting number less than or equal to 100. So, bali, they describe siya as a set. So, yung symbol na to, yung vertical line, nilirig siya as such that. So, again, ang pagkabasa dito is a set of all x such that x is a counting number less than or equal to 100. So, isa pang example of a universal set is a set such that all x is an even number. So next, we can also use the Venn diagram for us to visualize all of the things that we have previously discussed. So the Venn diagram, 
yung rectangle, it represents the universal set. So, dito, makita natin. Lahat ng nasa loob ng rectangle is part of the universal set. So, kasama dun yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Next, identify natin ano yung mga elements of set A. So, tignan lang natin kung ano yung nandito sa loob ng circle. So, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Next, let us identify the elements of set B. So, tignan natin ano yung mga laman ng set B. So, it's 2, 4, and 6. Now, tignan natin ano yung union of set A and set B. So, the union is this shaded region. So, tignan lang natin kung ano yung nasa loob ng dalawang circle. So, the union of set A and set B is a set that contains the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, yung intersection naman of set A and set B is itong region sa gitna. So, ito shade natin. So, the intersection of set A and set B is 2 and 4. Lastly, the complement of the union of set A and set B. So, since complement siya, dapat shading natin nasa labas ng dalawang circle but inside the universal set. So, ito yung region na yan. So, yung complement ng union ng set A and set B contains 7 and 8. So, I hope this is clear to all of you. So, for the next part, let's proceed with the lesson on real number systems. So, the real number system consists of five different um, classifications. So, una, I discuss natin the natural or counting numbers. So, natural or counting numbers include 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So, these are positive numbers yung normally na ginagamit natin sa pagbibilang. Every, yung mga natutunan natin ever since we were children, di ba? Next, whole numbers. Um, definition ng nito are counting numbers, but we include zero. So, for whole numbers, meron tayong zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So, dadagdagan lang talaga natin na zero yung natural or counting numbers. Next is integers. So, integers naman, um, we include the negative numbers. So, um, ilagay lang natin yung negative counterpart ng counting numbers. So, kunwari, we have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Next, we have uh, rational numbers. So, yung rational numbers naman are numbers that can be expressed as a ratio of two integers or as simple fractions. So, examples nito is 1 half or 0 0.5 because we know that 0 0.5 is also 1 half or we can have 0 over 0, 0 0.16. Kung 0 0.16, masusulat natin siya as 16 over 100. So, since we can transform this into a fraction, we can say that 0 0.16 is a rational number. So, yun. Anything lang siya na masasulat as a fraction. So, the whole numbers, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, yung mga counting numbers, are uh, also rational numbers kasi para lang siyang um, numbers that can be, uh, can have a denominator of 1. So, equal lang siya dun sa whole numbers na yun. So, next is irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are defined as non-terminating, non-repeating decimals, those that cannot be expressed as simple fractions, or the square root of numbers that are not perfect squares. So, to give you some examples ng irrational numbers, we have pi. So, as we all know, hindi uh, non-terminating and non-repeating and pi, and it cannot be expressed as a fraction. So, pi is an irrational number. Also, the square root of numbers that are not perfect squares. So, for example, the square root of 2, the square root of 5, you know, mga irrational numbers. So, to be able to understand this even more clearly, we can also show the real number system using a Venn diagram. So, meron tayong universal set, 
which are, which is the set of real numbers. So under the universal set, we have two different sets, which is the rational numbers and the irrational numbers. Inside rational numbers are the integers. So let's refresh lang tayo. Ang rational numbers are those that are can be expressed as ratio of two integers or simple fractions. So inside rational numbers, we have the integers. Um, ito yung mga may, we start with the negative numbers, zero, and the positive numbers. So integers are also rational numbers. Inside the integers, we have the whole numbers. So again, whole numbers are um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0 including all the positive numbers. So whole numbers are also integers and are also rational numbers. So since nandun sila sa loob ng set of rational numbers. Lastly, we have the natural numbers. So your natural numbers are counting numbers that starts with 1 onwards. So these are all the positive numbers. So natural numbers are also rational numbers. So I hope that the concept of real number systems is clear now uh, using this Venn diagram. So, ayan, makikita natin. Nasa magkahiwalay na set ang rational and rational numbers. And under rational numbers, we have integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. So that ends our lecture on real number systems and sets and set notations. So we will be uploading a separate video containing the examples for this particular lessons for us to further understand the concepts and para mas practice natin yung skills that we learned on this lecture. So thank you everyone and see you on the next lecture.